Family Theater presents Celeste Holm, Dane Clark, and Henry Ho. Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, brings you Henry Hull as Captain Ahab and Dane Clark as Ishmael in Herman Melville's familiar classic, Moby Dick. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Celeste Hull. Thank you, Jean. When the good ship Highlander weighed anchor in New York for Liverpool in 1837, it was indeed a momentous and fortunate event in the history of American literature. For it was then that a lad of 17 set out upon the eight years of seafaring that were to take him to the faraway reaches of the seven seas. This young man was Herman Melville, who began and ended his 72 years in New York, and with his writing, built a lasting monument to America's literary genius. Of his eight successful works, the seventh, alive with Melville's sense of beauty and of terror, was titled Moby Dick. In recounting the story of Moby Dick, the white whale, Melville inspires the longing for and respectful awe of the sea in each generation. And now, with sincere pleasure, I invite you to listen to Dane Clark as Ishmael recounting the fanatic and tragic hunt of Henry Hill's Captain Ahab for Moby Dick, the white whale. <laughs> It is now weeks since the Nantucket whale ship Pequod turned southward from her Massachusetts anchorage. And aboard her, the ship and crew has settled down to the monumental monotony of a ship's routine. A monotony that welds the crew into one mind, one force to be driven by the words of its captain. A monotony that finds relief in endless speculation about the days to come. And often as the sinking sun changes the deep blue water to evening's gray, their talk becomes graver, one of whispers among small clusters of men. For to the crew of the Pequod, who have yet to see their captain, even now the ship seems to have set sail upon a journey of darkening destiny. Call me Ishmael. For though a seaman has no need for a name in the records of time, I am also of the land. And to it I have returned since the fateful days of the old Pequod and her captain and crew. I was of that crew. I and there were the mate, Starbuck, the dour Nantucket man, and Stubb, neither a craven or a bold man, with all lazy and easy of smile. There were the harpooners, for the Pequod was a whale ship and we were whalers all. And then there was Queequeg, the South Sea Islander who brought me to the Pequod. For the stories he spun of the mammoth whales in distant waters persuaded me to sign aboard the Pequod with him. And with him I now shared my watches upon the afterdeck, still awaiting my first glimpse of the man who captained the stout whaling ship. It, it, it worries me sore, Queequeg. Here it is a week we've been to sea and nary a sight nor a sound of the captain. Yeah. I grunt if you will, for you've no interest to save for your harpoons and that monstrous tomahawk pipe at your belt. But I tell you, it's unnatural. That's what it is. Maybe he no like walk deck now. Well, he might find it a bit difficult to get about the deck, what with one leg and all, but, but even then he should have shown himself to the crew. Mm. It's no secret among the crew. He must know that, Queequeg. Quick. Still in all, I wonder how a man feels when he's lost a leg to a whale. Him think only about day he catch up with white whale Moby Dick. Me think we no like it on Pequod until he does. Maybe no like it even then. Mm. Well, now, indeed, I should like to see this man whose thirst for vengeance is so great. Do, do you suppose that's why we're carrying a secret crew aboard? Oh, I know, I know, none has seen it, but every night you hear whispers of them in the forecastle. I no see strange men. I know, listen, folks. Well, talk. the steward said there were others aboard, but no one's seen them. Now, Queequeg, do you suppose... You... Shh. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Queequeg? It must be the captain. Him walk like that two, three minutes. You not hear? Oh, I have not your heathen ears, my friend. Listen. Oh, faith, it's an eerie sound in the night. Shh. He's coming towards us. Him 
stop. Light pipe. Hey. Hey, my poor pipe. Even you have failed me now. But then you were meant for sereneness, not to send up your mild white vapors among troubled, torn gray locks like mine. <laughs> ah, if I could but forget. Forget. I must. I... Alas, my pipe, there is no longer pleasure in even you. Here, here, go and join the devils of the sea. Hey, and mayhap there'll yet be company for you there, sent from the Pequod with the compliments of her master, Captain Ahab. What's the stir, Mrs. Stab Trouble? It's the captain, man. Captain Ahab wishes to meet his crew. Here now, men. You think I said old Nick himself were here to greet you? There's no need to be afraid of... Attention! Men! Do you see this? It's gold! Whoever of you raises me a white-headed whale with a wrinkled brow and a crooked jaw, a white monster with three holes in his starboard fluke, he shall have this ounce of Spanish gold I've nailed to the mast. <laughs> and I promise that one of you shall win it, for we'll not see port again until I have killed the monster that crippled me. Then did we shift to hunt Moby Dick the white whale? Aye, Starbuck. It was that accursed white whale that dismasted me. And I'll chase him through the southern ice floes. There I'll give him up. I cannot speak for the crew, Captain Ahab, but I came here to hunt whales, not my commander's vengeance. And I, mister, came to hunt Moby Dick. And I shall wreak my hate upon him, nor shall any of you stand between me and that goal. That Mr. Starbuck, I promise you. And so we sailed on. But now we were a coal ship, a ship ridden with hate, prey to the daily increasing uneasiness as more and more one heard talk of a secret crew aboard, yet none saw them. Aye, we were a ridden ship, fearfully awaiting the day when the lookout would first cry, Spam ahead! Spam ahead! Two points up the pond water! Vanilla! Man the boat! Quick, Rick! Those men, there has been a secret crew aboard. Look at that leader, the one with the turban. He's Fatala. Others from Manila speak crew for that. I'd hop to it there! Quick, Rick, check your gear. There's oil to be gotten. Mr. Starbuck! Starbuck, who's the leader there? The Chinese fellow. <laughs> for one thing, he's the best harpooner who ever sailed blue water. For another, he's a quick one with that knife of his. Keep clear of it. I what a big brute. Harpooning is not for children. On the double now, into the whale boat. We've not got all day to watch Captain Ahab's heathen at work. Up the stroke, man, or we'll not be getting close enough for Queequeg to use the iron. Sir, sir, he's sounding. Look, look, look sharp now, men. Watch for him to break water. Quick, Craig, does a whale always disappear so suddenly? Oh, oh quick, come up, quick, too. Right. Smash boot. All right, you two, stop the chatter. Keep a sharp eye out. If he turns toward us, we'll have little enough time to escape without waiting for you to finish the conversation. Look, look. look off the bow. He's surfacing. Out to starboard. Pull, you devils. Pull if you want to miss Davy Jones this day. Now, go. It's no use, sir. Ah. He's turning toward us. He'll run us down. Over the side, men! Grab whatever you can find to the ocean! The whole cold night we lay there in the water, drifting we knew not where. But by midday next, the Pequod sighted us, and in the afternoon threw a line down to us where we lay barely afloat. In the days that followed, I was to learn that lost boats are a common occurrence on a whaler. 
soon immersed in the daily shipboard routine had all but forgotten the ordeal. Then the day came, the day came of our northward run, and that day also we made our first kill. And now, instead of dried fish and ship's biscuits, we dined in the thick steaks we cut from our kill. Ishmael, secure the harpoons for tomorrow's hunt. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, Perth. Are the harpoons ready for number two boat? Come on, step on it, you lazy rat. Oh. oh, uh, good evening, Captain. I didn't see you. Hey. Perth? Hey, sir. Look you here, man. I want a harpoon made one that a thousand yoke of fiends couldn't tear apart. Something that'll stick to a whale like his own fin bone. In this bag here is the stuff. Here are gathered nail stubs from the steel shoes of racing horses. Horseshoe stubs, sir. Then you have the finest and stubbornest stuff we blacksmiths ever worked. Stubborn. <laughs> It'll melt together as butter in a hot biscuit do. Come, I'll blow up the fire for you myself. You two can stay to spell me. Perth, send your boy for Fedala and the other harpooners. Aye, sir. You heard the captain, lad. On the double now. Now... Now, Perth, let us to work. Here, 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 man. They're not yet ready for the water. Bedala, tell this shaft where he may find our Moby Dick. Boy, on us who has seen him. Now, now, Perth, the water. Well done, blacksmith, well done. And now for the barbs. You must make them yourself here. Here are my razors. They are of the best steel. But your razors, sir, they are so fine. Take them, I say. For now I neither shave, sup, nor breathe until... Here, to work, to work. <laughs> Moby Dick shall indeed meet his end at my hands. <laughs> Now, nightly, Captain Ahab sat in his cabin. The harpoon he had fashioned held across his lap and the light of madness in his eyes. I heard him talk to Fidella, his faithful person. Fidella, I, I dreamed it again. Do you hear, Fidella? I, I saw them again. Didst dream again of the hearses, Captain? Have I not said, old man, again and again, that neither hearse nor coffin shall be thine? Aye, but, but who... Oh. Who are ye, the hearst or coffin that die upon the sea, Padella? But I also said, old man, that ere thou couldst die upon this voyage, two hearses must truly be seen by thee upon the waters. Ah, come, 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 Padella, you, you speak foolishly. How can one come upon a hearse upon the water? Who can say, old man? Yet one that you see must not be made by mortal hand, and the visible wood of the other must be grown in American forests. Aye, and a strange, unlikely sight that would be. Such a sight we would not believe. Believe it or not, old man, such a sight must be seen by you ere you die. And as for me, though we two be the last on earth, I shall still go before you as your pilot. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, 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 what nonsense. But when you are gone, then must you return again to appear before me to guide me to my end? <laughs> Then, then I now have two pledges that I shall yet slay Moby Dick and survive. Then take yet another pledge, old man. Hemp alone can kill you. <laughs> the, the gallows, you mean, eh? <laughs> then indeed am I immortal on land and on sea. I am immortal on the sea. <laughs> In the days that followed, we saw no whales, but soon we did meet the Nantucket ship Rachel. And from her skipper learned that the white whale had but the day before towed off one of her boats and its crew. And in that direction we sat sail, leaving the Rachel to continue the search for her orphans of the sea. Oh, the lookout! Keep a sharp eye now! The white devil should soon be seen! By the compass of Davy Jones, the she blows! The she blows! You heard, men? Because I who sighted 
him, I had his fate that I should win my own gold coin. For it is my fate to kill the white monster. Steersman, port to helm. Come about now. Look out! What course does he set? Bearing steady, sir. One point off the starboard bow. Ah, I see, I see. There he blows. And again, he's, he's sounding. Down the gallons, Down the gallons! You know what we're saying this time. Man the three boats, Mr. Starbuck. You stay aboard and keep ship. Stand by to lower the boat. Soon the boats were strung out from the ship's side. And suddenly we, watching from the Pequot, could see the boats put about, frantically rowing for their very lives. For out of the sea came Moby Dick. And dead ahead lay the boat of Captain Ahab. Look, Mrs. Starbuck, he's got the boat. Moby Dick's got the boat. Aye, and watch how he shakes it. Lucky will be the men who survive it. Oh, the crew has disappeared, only for down on the captain remain. Look, look, his jaws crush the boat. Aye, there's been such a helm for Moby Dick. We must drag him off and save what we can. Sir, the captain's escaped. You see? You see how he swims in the water? The whale has thrown him clear. Pray that we have enough speed, Ishmael. See? Even now the whale turns upon Captain Ahab. Every eye aboard the Pequot was watching Moby Dick thrash about in mad circles, crazily trying to shake off the tiny human form that gripped its tail flute with the determination of the drowning. Then he gave a great shake of his tail and tossed the captain like a dart off into the sea. The great white monster leisurely turned tail upon us and swam majestically to leeward. Five oarsmen of Captain Ahab's boat were missing, and we saved only the captain and Fidella, still grimly holding Captain Ahab's harpoon. The next morning found them once again setting out in the small boats, with Captain Ahab sitting tensely in the spare boat, hurriedly rigged out the evening before. Bull! Bull! Has never before, men! Bull! Today, Moby Dick's hour and harpoon are near at hand. Pull closer. Any closer, old man, and his breathing will fan our cheeks. Look, even now he gathers to rush us. So much the better. Soon he'll be so close he can't see us before him. Then the harpoon will find its mark quickly. Old man, he is going to turn. You will have us all in the water again. Here, 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 change places with me, Fenella. I'll get him with an iron. There. Ah! A true hit! Put him out! The other boats are too close to us! You get us all! A hit! A hit! At last! I have you! Captain Ahab's iron went true, as did those from the other boats. And then Moby Dick went amok. And as a crazed monster turned in the sea, he fouled up the lines about him. He caught both Stubb's boat and the other and crashed them into the sea where they became but cedar chips. As for Captain Ahab's boat, Moby Dick saved it until the last. And then a headlong charge made it also but a mass of splinters. We found Captain Ahab grimly clinging to the wreckage of his own boat, as had Fidella the day before. Here, sir. Lean on me. Hey, this, this splinter of whale bone is a poor excuse for a leg. <sighs> which way, which way did that white demon go? As before, sir, to Lewood. Then why waste me time here? To the ship, we must chase him. Aye, and I'll want a boat crew for Fidella and myself. Who'll stand up for it? Sir, I think I should tell you that Fidella did not return. We could not find him among the wreckage. Oh, no, 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 that, that, that cannot be. No, no, send, send another boat for him. Search the ship. He, he must have swum back to it. He is not gone, I tell you. He is not gone. Sir, we saw him go among the tangle of the lines on Moby Dick. The white whale pulled him down with him. Ah, uh, then, then by the solemn heavens above. I promise you that we'll girdle the earth 12 times over high. I'll dive right through it if need be, but I'll slay him yet. Get me a harpoon. Do you hear? I'll slay him yet. And 
Thus we tracked the white whale through the night, but there were none who slept aboard the ship. And as the sun began a new day, we put out again from the Pequod for the third time, and this time I was among the crew. You see, you see, Starbuck, now for the third time my soul starts its journey of vengeance. Aye, sir. If you must have it so. Some ships sail from their ports and ever afterwards are missing. Saddest truth, sir. And some men die at high tide, some at ebb. As for me... <laughs> now, you men, put your backs into it. By my faith, I don't like the looks of the sharks about his crew cake. They have a look of waiting. Uh, they wait for Moby Dick, not us. Still, I shall be glad to be aboard the Pequot again tonight. See there! See there! The lookout gave the signal! Pull harder, men! The wheel's ahead! Drive, men! Drive harder! Ah, you need have no fear! No coffin and no hearse can be mine! Nor can I die but by him! I'll see you through! Pull, men! Pull! Pull. Sir! Sir, he's surfacing! Get ahead! There he is, sir! Give way there! Yes, I can. This harpoon must go home to his heart. He's going to broadside us, sir. He's turning into us. Aye, and let him. I cannot die but by him. Why then should I fear death from a whale? Sir, look! Look! Entangled among the lines on Moby Dick's side. Fidella. Fidella, my faithful posse. Fidella. I, I am dragged to his grave by the white whale. The prophecy. The prophecy, I posse. I see you again. And thou goest before me as you prophesied. And this, then, this white monster is the hearse you promised me. But I'll still hold you to the last letter of your word. Where, then, is the second hearse? Sir, the other boats are leaking badly. That request permission to return to the Pequot for repairs. There's... Ah, uh, where's Moby Dick? He's astern of us, sir. Look, he's making for the Pequot. He's going to ram her. No, no, he's turned back. He's turned towards us. Look alive now, men. We're near to him at last. Soon now, Moby Dick, my devil, and I'll have you. Ah, now. Strike two. Oh, fair hit, sir. You've got the beast. The devil, he... got the lines. He's gone. Sir, he's making for the Pequot. He's mad with pain. Look how he rushes headlong towards her. Pequot, uh, sir. It is no more. The whale has smashed it. It's sunk. And our shipmates with her all sunk. Uh, the ship. That was the second hearse. Its wood could only be American. Sir, the whale sounded again. He's not to be... Look, sharp men! He rises before us. And I, robbed of ship and friends, I shall still have my victory. Quick, quick, place the harpoon in him. He no kill whale. He bad to kill. What, 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 what's this? Would you mute me against your captain? Well, never mind. I'll settle with you later. Perhaps it is fitting that I should throw the steel. Then shall we all go to our doom towed by the white whale. Now then, thus, I give up the spear. Ah, hit, sir. Captain, the line's fouled about your leg. Yeah. Captain, the line's... Yeah. My knife, my knife, my knife. Cut it, cut it. Aye. Ah. Oh. Ah. Tis as Fidella has said. Only the hemp of a harpoon line could kill our Captain Ahab. <laughs> And I only am escaped alone to tell thee, as it says in the book of Job. But during the night, the small boat swamped, and buoyed by its fragments, I alone floated through the sea of sharks to live to testify to Captain Ahab's madness. But for what purpose, I have not yet learned. Perhaps, perhaps it is that I shall bear witness against the follies of man's search for his vengeance. Or perhaps it is 
that man's task here is for nobler purposes than the slaughter of those who would merely defend the life they have been given. No, no, I, I do not yet know the purpose, nor did I on that second day when a sail drew nearer and nearer and picked me up at last. It was the devious cruising Rachel that in her retracing search after her missing children found only in the sea another orphan. performances in Moby Dick. I think all of us find it fascinating to peer into the mind of a man like Captain Ahab, a man obsessed with a single idea, a man unbalanced by his morbid, unreasonable desire for revenge, which ruined his every chance for happiness. Lack of balance does that to a man, yes, and it'll do it to a family, too. We can become obsessed with the idea that some one thing spells the difference between happiness and unhappiness in our home. Money, for instance, or social standing, or the education we're able to give our children. Well, there's something else that's more important. It's the love and loyalty and faith in God that exists in a truly happy home. Men and women who are really balanced and truly reasonable understand this. They understand that prayer, daily family prayer, is a necessity in every home. We of Family Theater invite you to discover for yourselves that praying together as a family is a way of ensuring your family happiness. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Family Theater has brought you Dane Clark and Henry Hull and Herman Melville's Moby Dick with Celeste Holm as your hostess. The story was adapted for radio by Arthur Sawyer with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. Others in our cast were Nestor Piva, Kim Nusser, William Conrad, Joseph Kearns, and Tudor Owen. The series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program and by the mutual network which has responded to this need. This is Gene Baker inviting you to be with us next week at this time when your family theater will bring you Alan Young and Patricia Neal in My Terminal Moraine. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>